Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to dive into some inventory management data. So we're actually going, I'm actually going to work through, uh, and this is going to be the start of a number of uh, videos where I actually dive into different types of data sets. Um, in the past, I've, I've, I've stayed very financial or sales um, driven, but there's obviously so many different types of data out there. And it's important to showcase Power BI in a way that is um, unique to different situations. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And, and I'm going to start by running uh, today by running through something to do with um, analysis to, due, due to, uh, to do with inventory management. And I've, I've had a few requests for this. So, so that's why I'm really diving into it. And um, I'm going to showcase techniques. A lot of the techniques that I might have used uh, on different scenarios, I'm going to show how you can do use them in uh, with data that's totally totally different in saying that this data isn't totally different because we are comparing in this case sales information but we're comparing it we're contrasting it to inventory information and so i'm just going to jump to the data model and show you uh the slight difference in what we or what we what we're working with here so if you think about inventory right what's key with inventory is sales information you need to know what your sales are you need to obviously calculate what your sales are, but then to optimize your inventory, you need to grab a you you would generally uh, generally be looking at a table that is a timestamp at any one period in time. So inventory data, you're going to have a different inventory level or different inventory information every single day, right? Uh, but sales information is historic, so you, you're going to you're going to want to analyze historic sales information to make sure that you are optimizing your inventory levels uh, at any one point in time. So what I've done here is I've connected up uh, a number of lookup tables to these fact tables because we've got two fact tables here. So it's not um, too tricky there. We've got customers, warehouse codes, and products. The only difference is the date here. So I've created an inactive relationship here because I don't want to filter this inventory stock table by the date really at all because this is a timestamp. This, uh, this is only um, you know, the very last day or could be today, for example, of where our stock levels are at. Now, obviously this is historic information, so the last day in here I think is June 2016 or something like that. Um, but so so we, you've just got to imagine that the level of stock on this, this table here is on that very day. This is what the stock levels were. And then we come back into the report here. And so what I've done is I've compared. So I've said, okay, so end of July is the very last day of our, of our sales or of our data sets, right? So on that day, um, we know what I, we can we can timestamp and say okay well here's here's all the sales we've made and we want to compare how many sales we've made in the last 90 days to how much stock we actually have on hand right so the way I did that the way I did that was I came uh, I created a measure so obviously I started with total revenue I've got uh, in the sales data table I had a revenue uh, revenue figure and then to calculate the last 90 days, I use dates between, okay? So you see here, dates between allows you to have a start date and an end date. And so I said, so whenever, so whatever date this starts on, so in this case, it's 30th of the 30th of June, 2016, which was the last day of the data set. I said, go and calculate how much revenue we made in the last 90 days per product based on the two dates, so the max date will always equal to the last date in our data set or last date in the context, and that's 30th of June. And then max date minus 90 has given us that 90 day window to calculate up total total revenue for that for that time period for each individual uh, product. So if you look down here, you'll see, uh, and I can filter it. I can, um, so obviously, so we sold way more of this product than obviously these products, uh, but this is only the sales in the last 90 days. And then we can contrast it to the total value of our current stock, right? So remember, the inventory is at a, at a timestamp. Think of the inventory table is going to be, okay, what is our inventory on the 30th of June 2016? Okay, well, this is the current value of stock. Now, the way I calculated that is in our table, we had to iterate through every single row and count, uh, count up, well, how much quantity did we have and what was the cost per item, right? What was the cost per item? So for every single row, that's the logic that we run through, and then the sum x does the sum of the total value at the end of that. And so now we can actually see for each individual product how much stock we have on hold. 
And then what we can do, and what is a really relevant count here, we might wanna run a stock ratio, right? And so we might wanna check, okay, well, is there a, we might have a, you know, a level, we might have a ratio level that we, would, we will want to be at um, for all of our products, right? So that we always have in stock enough products to sell. And so what I've done is I've, I've made, with these two calcs, I can branch out into this other um, piece of logic, the stock ratio, just as simply as this. All I went was divide, I said, uh, total revenue in the last 90 days divided by the total value of current stock. And then that gives us, um, I guess, a second derivative or a secondary figure that we can analyze and sort by um, to, to see what, what stuff is selling well, what stuff is not selling well. And then what we can do is we can actually, um, using this great the great table feature, we can actually uh, sort and have a look at, well, what are, what are the low stock ratios versus the high stock ratios, right? And so these low stock ratios obviously suggest that we probably uh, we probably don't have that much stock on board. We, pro we probably need to get more stock in, potentially, depending on what your ratio, you wanna set your ratio at, uh, to actually fulfill orders in the future. And on the flip side, high ones, well, these are obviously are very, you know, are, are poorly selling products. They're not selling very much. You know, maybe we should be discounting these products. Maybe we should just get, it, get them out the door uh, so that we can eat into the stock, which is just sitting around um, and, and not bringing, um, you know, it's just chewing up cash in the business, right? And so those are the really, really cool insights that you can actually get from inventory, inventory data. And then so the other thing is that this is linked up to our data model, right? And so we actually have a number of warehouses that this stock could be held at, right? And so we also might want to optimize that. We might, might want to see, okay, well, how, um, you know, what, what sales will we make in, in particular regions and where are they located in our warehouses? And then we can click on the warehouse and we can very quickly see, okay, well, this is the, this is the stock that we currently have at that particular warehouse. Right, and then we can match it up to sort of regional information. Um, haven't done that in this case, but um, but that's the power of being able to utilize the data model and behind the scenes to then put these additional filters in place. Okay, so obviously um, you know, this uh, this will be made available um, if you want to download this resource. It just requires a, a small investment at Enterprise DNA online. Check out the description below uh, for details on that. Uh, so hopefully you thought there's it's, you know, there's a pretty awesome insight in, in, in this and it didn't take a huge amount of time to set it up. The key, I guess the key when you're working with this inventory, I would, uh, inventory information I would suggest is understanding the data model really well here, right? This is just not a standard data model. You need to understand that you have two fact tables here and that you need to link up your lookup tables to these two fact tables in a way that the filters work well, the filters work correctly, so that when you go and add some context to your calculations, that the uh, filters in place are, are, are calculating results that, um, that make sense to you. So pretty cool, pretty cool um, deep dive into some inventory information there. Hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully some of the um, some of the people who have been requesting this sort of stuff and enjoy this sort of content. So if you do um, and you can throw us throw a like on the video, really really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to also subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. It'll be new content and also a lot more of these deep dives coming out shortly. So. Um, so make sure to subscribe to um, to get those as soon as they come out. Okay, best of luck with utilizing some of these techniques uh, in your models, even though they aren't, um, it might not be inventory driven in a lot of cases. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you're able to garner some some really good techniques and insight out of, um, out of what we've gone through today and can apply some of these things into what you're doing. Good luck with it.